It's a good question, but uh, it's not very. I mean, Switzerland is not very close. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think they wouldn't go in Japan. Um, China also, I don't believe. Uh, so there's only uh, Russia. They could escape to Russia, mm. probably. The concert was very special. Um, all the meetings that we had with the local, um, you know, people who organized concert and also with the uh, Committee for Cultural Exchange, that was also very, very interesting. Um, everything, was, everything was pretty interesting and uh, for me, personally, the most uh, memorable experience was when, uh, when I went for a walk without you know, official permission from, the, from our uh, hosts. Mm -hmm. And uh, I actually walked around the city for a while and um, you know I saw so to say real life which was you know quite inspiring quite nice in fact it was um, a very nice well the question is what really is totalitarian state nowadays you know uh, I think that what uh, what is what everybody thinks that is happening in North Korea it's a, it's pretty much a romantic image of totalitarian totalitarianism, and the real totalitarianism is happening uh, where the money is, so to say, pretty much on the West. And I can say that uh, Russia is following the corporativist logic very much, as I can see. Yeah, this is exactly the same thing that I was talking before about, you know, the different understanding of mm -hmm. what totalitarianism really is nowadays. Censorship in, the, in, the, in North Korea was, you know, the good old classical traditional one. There's a bunch of censors came and they debate and they, they were thinking and maybe, you know, they didn't like this rhythm, they didn't like that text, whatever, you know. So you know what they are talking about, you know, where, where you are, in fact. You know, you have to maybe cut out some things which are quite irrelevant. But uh, in the West, censorship is much more subtle because it's happening on the, again, I have to say, on the basis of, of, uh, of the, so to say, free market logic, which means, you know, if you are not consumable, you are basically censored because they, they won't play you in a, on the radio. They won't, you know, and if, if you... If you take a look, if you are, of course, very, you know, if, if you do a proper search, you will see that there, there's the same kind of music on the radio everywhere, all the time, a very specific kind of music and so on. And censorship is happening on, on different level, on the level of ignorance, really, on the level of, you know, you are not consumable. I don't, <clears throat> I don't know, it's hard to say. We, you know, we don't have personal accounts since Livok is a collective uh, project, so we are avoiding personal accounts. Um, and uh, it's, again, we don't, you know, Livok was, we had many problems in, in, in our uh, history, and we still do some, times we still have but um, I, I don't think that we are you know extreme band extreme project except that we were playing you know on the North Pole in the in minus 20 degrees and uh, and uh, that we went to I don't know we did a tour in Siberia when that was really difficult we were performing in uh, North Korea when that was when that was really difficult but you know, this is, it's not really extremism of, of, of that kind. And we are still alive after, I don't know, 40 years, which is a bit extreme. Um, well, our sh 
we first time came to Soviet Union was in 1987 winter time uh, around New Year and we spent some time in Moscow and uh, some time in uh, St. Petersburg, uh, Leningrad still. And uh, that was our first visit, which was basically totally, we did it out of curiosity and because we wanted to knew the, you know, the real life here and we wanted to meet people and so on. And later on we came many times and our first show was in 1994 in uh, Hala Gurbunova, which was a pretty interesting time, I, I have to say. The 90s in, uh, in Moscow, was, as you are uh, aware yourself, and in Russia were, were qu quite extreme. But we did several shows, so we know the situation. Uh, we were kind of following the, you know, how the, the country was changing and developing and so on. And it's uh, very, very interesting to, to be part of that. I mean, uh, <clears throat> but um, we would love to do something, of course, back in the 80s, if, if that would be possible. But unfortunately, there was no no, we didn't get any similar invitation like we did in, uh, in uh, uh, North Korea. The nearest thing that happened was actually in 1992 when, uh, when we did the, when we proclaimed the, the Eneska state here in Moscow. In 1992, we proclaimed our own state and we have, um, if you maybe remember, we have developed, uh, we did this big action uh, black square on the red square. Um, that happened in 1992, the proclamation of the Eneska state in mm -hmm. Moscow and uh, the embassy of the Eneska state. That was a special situation. In, uh, we did a concert in uh, occupied Sarajevo in 1995. And uh, actually two concerts during the war. It was still during the war. And uh, we somehow succeed to get in with the UN forces and we did two shows, two concerts. It was a ceasefire and we also, uh, uh, you know, because the citizens of Sarajevo couldn't get out of surrounded Sarajevo uh, with Yugoslav passports because Yugoslavia did not exist anymore. They did not yet have the Bosnian passports, so we gave them passports of our own country, NSK country. Uh, and we gave quite a lot of passports, I think around 360. And uh, some of them reported us later that successfully used those passports because the, you know, French soldiers and whoever was there, the, the UN forces and so on, who supposed to, uh, to uh, guard watch the, you know, the, uh, who is coming in in Sarajevo and out, they didn't know what NSK state is, and uh, when they saw uh, NSK, the diplomatic passport, they just let everybody go. So, you know, people finally, after five years or so, they succeeded to get out of Sarajevo, you know, and came back with, again, with some goods and so on. Yeah, I mean, NSK state is something that, as I said, was created here in Moscow in 1992 on a symbolic place uh, of the uh, Red Square uh, with uh, covering of the, you know, big black square, Malevich black square, of course, um, in the central of Red Square. So that was the proclamation of NSK state and uh, it, is, it still exists. Leibach was uh, one of the f founders of the NSK state uh, in 1992, but we are not, uh, so to say, involved in it anymore. We let, it's a kind of democratic experiment. We let it to the citizens, you know, here's your state. If you believe in it, it's going to, um, you know, exists, so, you know, find your own way how to constitute it and so on. It's a state without territory. It's a utopian project. It's a kind of social sculpture. And uh, citizens are still uh, uh, 
coming. Citizenship is growing. It, it's around 20,000 citizens at the moment, which makes us bigger than Vatican. It's, uh, well, it's hard to say, you know, but uh, the, the thing is that states can be created uh, uh, anew. They can, of course, you know, every, you know, states were created artificially, so to say, you know, because somebody occupied somebody else's territory and he said, okay, this is now, you know, my state. And that's how the states happened, you know, basically through the history, we have ch chasing each other and fighting each other and occupied territories and put the fences around and so on. Uh, and that's how states were actually created. And then the economy had to start and political system and so on. Our state, Enesca state, has a bit of a problem because it has no territory except the territory of mind and time. So you have to use your imagination in this state and um, you know it can be bigger than any other state but I think nowadays uh, uh, we live in specific times that uh, more and more people are without their own states so you know they grab for any solution they can find well Yugoslavia is special uh, special case because, you know, it, Balkan was always a, a troublesome area, so to say, since, you know, Bismarck and before and so on, Yugoslavia was so, the Balkan area was, was basically a, a belly of Europe, that's how they call it, you know, the, where the troubles always were produced. It's a very interesting uh, territory. Uh, with many different nations and religions and, you know, uh, cultures together. Extremely interesting on a small, on a small territory, but it's always, it's, it's a troublemaking, uh, it's a troublemaking territory. And um, I'm not trying to say that it is not possible to civilize it, civilize it. I hope not, but you know, Eventually, of course, it's going to probably happen, but uh, it's a specific place, and um, it uh, it's um, it's an ongoing uh, struggle, so to say, uh, and uh, it's it, not the whole Yugoslavia is the same. You know, the, the, the differences are quite radical, quite specific. I mean, Slovenia, where we are coming from, was quite lucky because of, uh, you know, its own tradition and because of the geographical terrain and so on. And uh, we only had a short war, a, a ten, 10 days war in 90s. But uh, Bosnia was, uh, was the biggest problem, of course, also because all the cultures and nations of Yugoslavia actually met there, inside Bosnia, where the strongest society is actually um, uh, Muslim society, but it's not traditional Muslim, it's a kind of European uh, Muslim, which means not a hardcore, you know, traditional Islam and so on. And um, it is just, uh, you know, the, the belly, the bottom of the whole belly. Uh, and uh, the, the, it's not yet quite clear what will happen in Bosnia and Herzegovina. But, you know, the war was cruel, of course. It was very banal, uh, very cruel. And, um, and uh, I think that, you know, the times are still very tense. But at the same time, it's, you know, safe to go there and, you know, it's a, it's a, anyway, it's, it's a very inspiring uh, place. And we feel sorry about, of course, Yugoslavia. It was a good country. Well, 
Kosovo, again, is a very small country. And it's also, of course, a special, very special uh, situation mm -hmm. there, um, which is impossible to explain in uh, simple words because of the, all the, um, you know, the history that was, that is connected and to the cultural um, tradition connected to the, to the area. But uh, we did have a big concert in Kosovo a few years ago, and it was a totally different situation than, of course, in the, in the previous times when Kosovo was just a, a small uh, minor part of Yugoslavia. And I think that, uh, you know, quality of life and generally it has uh, raised up on some areas, but not everywhere. Of course, there's still troublesome areas. Uh, it's a very sensitive, uh, sensitive uh, territory, sensitive place, uh, you know, for um, Kosovo people, for Albanians and for Serbs. So uh, it's an ongoing process, really. Slovenia is a very small country. It's only two million people. But it's really well positioned geographically in, uh, so to say, really central, central heart of Europe between Italy, Austria, Hungary, Croatia. Uh, everything is very close from Slovenia. You know, even we sometimes have to explain Italians who, who might not know where Slovenia is, that we are much closer to Venice than most of Italy is. Which is true, you can really go to coffee in, for a coffee in Venice if you want, in a day and come back in the evening. But uh, so it's geographically, it's geographically, it's really well positioned. And um, politically, I don't think it plays a major role. But, uh, you know, your president Putin was there a few times. Once he had the first meeting with Bush in Slovenia. Second time, I think he was there for... Uh, for a visit of the really nice old monument, which was uh, created in honor of, uh, of uh, Russian prisoners of the First World War, uh, who lost their lives in Slovenia and so on. Um, so it could, you know, be the small thong on the, how do you say, it could add a little bit in political terms. It's not a big country, it doesn't have the real power, but you know, it could represent more than actually it does, so to say. Maybe with, with a bit more diplomacy, it could be a big country. But you know, we usually say in Slovenia, us and Russians are 150 millions. I don't know how, how many how, how many Russians. Are? Uh, 142. Okay, so us and Russians is 144 millions together, and it's the most Western uh, Slavic nation. And we are where Slovenia is. It actually meet. That's where the, it's the point where Slavic culture meets with uh, 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 Germanic culture and Romanic culture. And then all these cultures go all around the world. It's actually one point in Slovenia, one mountain where these borders get together, which is quite an interesting place. I mean, um, the, the Sound of Music album was uh, created uh, because because we went to because we were invited to North Korea, and. Uh, we were thinking what to do in North Korea, what kind of music should be performed. And we realized that, there, uh, that Sound of Music, the film, is quite popular in North Korea and that people are you know, uh, learning English with the help of this film. So we said, okay, let's do something with Sound of Music. And we always liked that film, we always liked it somehow. It's a kind of, it's a very tricky film, you know, very Leibachian. And uh, we always wanted to do something with, with it. So North Korea was a big chance. And now the, the album is, uh, is released. It's going to be released this month. And it is actually part of the North Korean project. Uh, also Sprach Zaratustra, we created only because we were invited to, 
to do so. It was uh, originally a music for the theater, for the theater play, famous Nietzsche's novel, also Sprach Zarathustra. And, um, and again, after working on, on the theater music, we realized that we could maybe also release it as an album because it was interesting musically. And uh, that's how we decided to do both albums. They are not the major albums, they are more almost the side projects. And you're right, you know, from, from uh, Nietzsche to Freud, this is exactly what's, what these two albums, they, they actually communicate with one and with the other. And it's interesting uh, uh, that, uh, of course, we have a chance, not many bands have a chance to do things like that. But, you know, Leibach is uh, not a usual kind of band. And uh, regarding the question about Slavoj, you should really ask him, I don't know, you know, that's his interpretation. We don't interfere uh, in Slavoj's uh, thinking, so it's something you, could, you should talk to him. You know, when they were vo voting in, in America, what kind of language they're going to use uh, as official language way back, yes? There was only one vote missing, and America would speak German, because German was uh, one of the main languages in in, uh, in America at the start of formation of the uh, United States. That's an interesting issue. But uh, I mean, when you say that we are Germanophilic, uh, I, I wouldn't say so, you know, because we are, as I said before, we live on the crossroads of these different cultures. And, uh, of course, uh, also Slovenia and we were, uh, and the whole Europe was influenced a lot by, by German culture. So it's a part of our European tradition, so to say, yes. Uh, on the other hand, um, we also have a strong influence of uh, American, Anglo-American culture through the pop culture. So that's another big part of uh, European tradition. But nowadays, we live in a you know, in a global world, that's it. But we have uh, used many different languages, uh, Leibach, yes, including Russian and so on. And we would definitely love, we love, I have to say, we love uh, Russian culture a lot and uh, we would love to do, and it's, it was very important for us, uh, and we would love to do something more if we would have a chance uh, in, uh, in Russia and with uh, Russian literature or music or you know, whatever, or politics. So, uh, in that respect, we are quite open for all this. Well, Europe is a continent where the most cruel wars happened, you know, in the history of humankind. And uh, there were constantly some wars going on, constantly. Europe is the bloodiest continent of all, and probably the seed of evil for the for the for the rest of the world, with all the uh, imperial uh, logic, imperialistic logic, wars, killings, whatever, religion, etc., uh, etc. Et uh, let's face it; that's that's the truth of Europe. And uh, but and Europe was constantly falling apart with all these wars, constantly, and the more it was falling apart it was falling apart, the more kind of it constituted itself as a, as a force, as a political force, economical force, you know. So there is some logic in this falling apart of Europe uh, nowadays. And I think the, at the same time as it is falling apart, it actually constitutes itself. And I, I don't think that Europe has uh, much choices in nowadays world. It will have to stick together. It will have to stay together. It has to function as a, as one big, you know, entity. And uh, and we already said many times that we would love to see Russia being part of European Union. And then we would be able to say that Europe goes all the way to Japan, to Tokyo which is uh, an old wish by, you know, Ser Serbian culture, Serbian nation.
maybe, but uh, we're not entirely sure that UK is actually already out. There's still debates going on and, you know, people might change their minds. I think, I think everybody would vote. <laughs> We can only follow um, what's happening in Russia from a distance and um, we come here every, you know, here and there for a few days and see what, whatever we can see uh, and that is not enough to make, to make a really uh, final um, judgments. You know, we read, of course, news, we get all this good and bad information uh, and stories about Russia and uh, and uh, we don't want to judge on, on account of, you know, of what we... We can only make some conclusions, of course, you know, which, which are not entirely reliable, but from our own experiences, um, you know, we, you, we think that Russia has, um, of course, developed massively, a lot, uh, we don't know is that for a good or for a bad, is it going on a better or worse, uh, is it following too much, you know, the Western corporativist logic, I think it does, and um, we just wish uh, Russia all the best, and you know, it's a massive country, it's a great country, and uh, and there's always uh, difficult to to uh, work to, to actually to create uh, the perfect society in such country. America has great problems because of its, you know, past and the the because of its hu hugeness, so to say, and uh, I think also China. And, and Russia is even bigger. We really wanted to do something with, uh, in relation to Skriabin. In fact, when we were asked to do music for the Iron Sky 2, we want, originally wanted to link it to Skriabin, his famous unfinished last work. Uh, which is actually talking about similar thing as the, um, uh, the film does. But somehow it just didn't really, it didn't really went together quite well. So we didn't find the, 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 the proper way of including, incorporating Skariabin into the, into the whole idea. But uh, maybe we'll find, uh, you know, a different possibility. Uh, of course there are others, I mean, uh, from, uh, you know, vast uh, Russian music experience and so on, but uh, I just, uh, you know, Shostakovich is for sure somebody that we also very much appreciate. And, you know, everybody else, we know who the great composers are. I actually started as a Gesamtkunstwerk uh, back in uh, Early 80s, we were doing, you know, exhibitions and films and everything by ourselves. Neue Slovenische Kunst was created in 1984. It was a, a short period when Leibach was actually forbidden back in Slovenia and Yugoslavia. So we decided to create a bigger kind of Leibach and we created the Neue Slovenische Kunst, which also was called NSK. But that lasted only till 1992. And in 1992, uh, we have uh, created the Eneska state. So, Neue Slovenische Kunst does not exist anymore for, you know, 20, 20 since 1992, really. But we have the experiences from, yeah, from all the different media, uh, and we work in different media, and we don't limit ourselves only to, uh, you know, music only, and so on. Ignore the 40s. 
We are going to ignore it. No, we will work. We will just continue uh, with the projects. We have uh, some interesting projects already, um, you know, uh, planned. Uh, everything from, you know, opera to, I don't know, new albums and so on.